Yes, thank you for asking me today. My name is Marie Wagner, and I'd like to tell you about a project called Fur and Feathers, Animal Heroes of World War I. It's a series of multi-venue, multi-discipline events from 2016 to 2018. Uh, every May is Arkansas Heritage Month. And since 1982, Arkansans have been encouraged to discover and enjoy and explore and celebrate the history of our area through the month of May. And the theme that they selected for 2017 was World War I. 2017 is the 100 year anniversary of the US involvement in World War I. And so there are dozens of events all around the country. And you mentioned Kansas City has a big museum there and events. There are hundreds of stories to choose from when you think of World War I. There's women's involvement, minorities' involvement, uh, aircraft and flyers, naval operations and sailors, the various locations around the globe, the various nations that played a part, and the personal stories and interactions of the people from various places. But we chose to focus and celebrate the animals that served. Eight million horses and countless mules and donkeys died during the First World War. They were used to transport artillery and supplies. They were used as the ambulance to transport the dead and wounded. And many of the horses died not only from actual warfare, but also due to the weather and horrific conditions that they lived in. Dogs played an important part. Dogs were able to lay telegraph wires through dangerous territory. They detected mines. They could alert to gas or incoming fire. They dug out bomb victims. They could locate the injured and act as guard or patrol dogs. And dogs innately are courageous and loyal to their humans. Thousands of pigeons were used in the First World War. And they could carry messages through areas that communication was difficult. And they would fly at a mile a minute, which is 60 miles an hour. And they would fly through hails of bullets and bombs in all kinds of weather. They would fly from behind enemy lines sometimes, from airplanes, and from ships. Um, but surprisingly, these little birds actually were brave and heroic too and saved hundreds if not thousands of lives. This is one of the most famous pigeons, Cherami, and there's an animated film called The Aviators that tells the story of Cherami. And she flew more than a dozen important missions to deliver messages during the war in France. And the most famous one is how she saved the lost battalion of the 77th Division. So she was flying with this message and got shot down, got back up and started flying again, and flew 25 miles to deliver this message. But she lost an eye got shot in the breastplate with a wound the size of a quarter, and on a pigeon, that's a pretty big wound. And through that wound, her almost severed leg was just hanging by a couple of tendons, and attached to that leg was the canister with the message. So she survived, she did lose her leg, and the body is on display at the Smithsonian Institution. But lots of animals were involved in all kinds of ways, some merely as mascots and some served other purposes. Um, elephants helped move heavy loads or build roads. Camels you were used in North Africa a lot. Rabbits, chickens. A baboon was not just a mascot, but also learned to do some important tasks. Um, cats. Cats were mascots, but they were also good mousers and ratters in the trenches that the men lived in. Canaries, glowworms, they, the men would put glowworms in a jar so that they could read their letters in the trenches. Um, 
So I wanted to point out the little bear in the upper left-hand corner. That bear is named Winnie, and the little boy is Christopher Robin. And that is a real bear that was bought by a Canadian soldier when he was, he was traveling across Canada to ship out to Europe for the war. And he saw this little cute bear cub for sale for $20, and he bought it. And it shipped with him to England, and the men just loved it. It was their little pet. But when he got ready to ship to the front, he couldn't take the bear with him, and so he thought he'd leave it at the London Zoo until he got back. But by that time, everybody had fallen in love with the bear. The kids and the people of London just loved that bear, and they'd feed it sweet milk. And his name was Winnie, and that's where Christopher Robin met the bear, and his father wrote the books, Winnie the Pooh. So there's a lot of great stories. I mean, you wouldn't think a rooster would be so important, but it was a mascot that, that made somebody feel human, and, and also it was a, like a, a watchdog. Arkansas actually played a part in this whole thing. Camp Pike, Arkansas was built quickly in 1917, down by Little Rock, and it was the Auxiliary Remount Depot 317 that took care of nearly 4,000 horses for the war operation. This is a sketch by a man from Romance, Arkansas, David C. Height, who was in the veterinary field unit in France. And this was a sketch he did years later of his remembrances of his time there. And you can see the dead soldier, the dead horse, the wounded horse, the fires, the destruction. It was a horrific war and a horrific experience for man and beast. This is a little side project we are working on or have created a, because I belong to the Cotter Chamber of Commerce and they mentioned the cemetery. I collected all the names of the World War I veterans in the Cotter Cemetery, and this is a fundraising project for, for the Cotter Cemetery. But it could be adapted to other wars, other uh, you know, single branches of the service, or just individual families. But even if these soldiers were not in the cavalry or veterinary service themselves, they still interacted, depended on, or benefited from the animals used during the war. So what are we doing for our events? Uh, we started in December of 2016 reading these two stories at the story time at Marion County Library. Stubby, the dog soldier, and you can see him down here. He's got a whole bunch of medals. He's the most decorated dog from World War I. And rags a little hero dog. Um, the month of May, we will have an art exhibit at the Veda Shed Gallery at ASU Mountain Home. May 11th is our opening reception, and everyone's invited. I laid a, the cards there are an invite to the reception and the show. We'll be publishing a book including all the art and exhibits uh, in, involved in that. In June, the exhibit will move to the Boone County Library. Uh, we'll be at the Ancestor Fair in Searcy, and then a program at the Boone County Library. October 22nd, we'll be here for the, it'll be part of the Sunday Classics at this library. And next year, I just found this great animated film that's gonna be coming out about Stubby. So that looks like fun, so watch for that one. Um, we'll be doing a presentation next year at the Daughters of the American Revolution Convention and a presentation at a teachers group in Bruno. I'm not sure exactly who they are, if they're retired teachers or a fraternity. We've created a number of coloring pages and I left a few of those out there. They're all free on our website to print from, to use for your kids, your clients, yourself. We've given them to restaurants and businesses for their clients, and we've given them to preschools and libraries and youth organizations. And each, each little picture has a, a short story about the, um, about the animal, like rags, 
He was just found abandoned in Paris by a U.S. soldier, and they became fast friends. And then he, he learned a lot of things. Like he would see the soldiers, when a bomb would come in, he'd see the soldiers hit the ground. And so with his good hearing, he could hear the bombs coming before they could. So the soldiers would be just doing whatever they do, and he'd see the dog hit the ground, they'd know there was incoming. You know, little things like that. <laughs> He learned all on his own. So what's in it for you? You could attend the exhibit and events in your communities. Bring your children, your clients, your friends. You could read stories at your daycare or your library. Um, a lot of people are just really not aware of World War One and all the stories involved and there are a lot of fun, cute stories to share. You could watch at home or host a film like War Horse, Rin Tin, Finding Rin Tin Tin, or The Aviators. And I think Marion County Library is planning to show The War Horse at their movie night in the near future. Get inspired to learn more of the f different facets of World War I. It's really fascinating when you start looking into all the different stories. And the other goal for this project was to encourage awareness of the importance of animals to humans and to encourage support with animal welfare organizations. So future projects and grants. This program was made possible in part by a grant from the Department of Arkansas Heritage funded by your 1 8% conservation tax.